Welcome back to the channel guys. We've got a brand new series for you. Originally, I was going to make a different series and it was going to be a lot more negative focused. I wanted to just rant about the game and get out all of my complaints, my grievances, etc. with the game. Hopefully you can't hear my background, but for some reason my computer is on overdrive right now and it sounds like it's about to explode. But back to, back to the main purpose of the video which is the new series. So we're going to actually call this the How To Fix Good Game Empire series. And it's going to be a technically unlimited amount of videos because there's so much in this game that can be fixed. We're just going to start today with something super simple, something that you all have seen, and it is called Shapeshifters. And obviously the title said this, so you know that we're going to be talking about how to fix Shapeshifters. So let's talk about Shapeshifters in general. Let's get straight to it. A little bit of an overview of how the event works. You're going to first of all want to go into hardcore mode and turn every single thing on because this event is not hard enough to not have hardcore mode on. Just use hardcore mode no matter what. You get this many attacks per day, five attacks per day. You'll pretty much go out here, click on one of these guys, espionage them really quick and start sending your attacks. So let me do that really quickly and we'll get back into the rest of the video. We've got all five attacks out now. If you take a look at the troops in general, they're not that strong, 140. I think that's about the same defense that a Sentinel of the King's Guard would have. So it's super easy to attack them, and usually their defense isn't even that important, honestly. That just auto-filled, and you're starting to see a theme of me literally auto-filling wherever because I'm super lazy. That's not really the case here. There's no real punishment for doing bad in this event. You actually don't lose troops or tools in this event, so even if you lose, you actually don't lose anything whatsoever. It's a lot like the Ice Stalkers event, actually. You know, this event where you attack a bunch of other players using anonymous attacks, and if you lose, if you win, if you win, obviously you get the rewards, but if you lose, you're not actually losing anything whatsoever. So there's no penalty, which I really like because it's a more laid back NPC event. I do believe this resets every day. I might be completely wrong. I can't remember. I don't actually think it does. You can always buy these little point boosters to get more points out of it, but please don't because this event is not in a state where I'd recommend doing that whatsoever. Moving on, here's the rankings. Rankings is super simple. I mean, this tells you a little bit more about how many points you can get per attack, but as you saw, all I did was autofill. Let's talk about the rewards. So we have the charm shop and we have the insignia shop. The charms and insignias can be earned by different various attacks that you do. So based on your rank, you get a different amount of shapeshifter insignia payout. And then per attack that you do, you get a certain amount of charms as well. So I have all of my attacks out already, as you saw. Let's take a look at the actual rewards themselves. So first of all, the charm shop. You can get the shadow sorcerer, which back in the day used to be a really good Castellan. I think it was actually the go-to that most people would use because it had pretty decent stats. I'm trying to read them out, but in reality, if I don't have it all the way equipped, you can't really fully see what this Castellan would look like. So we're not going to focus on that. Then we scroll down and take a look at the other rewards. We've got a Celestial Pool. This is also only good if you're sub level 70, but once you reach level 70, none of these rewards actually help. We can look a little bit more. You also have the Apprentice Summoner, which is a commander. And this commander is also semi-decent. It's good for sub-level 70 players. Then you have, you know, materials, which obviously at my level, like I've been saying this entire time, it doesn't really matter. And this food storage item even doesn't matter. Same with this one. 35 food production bonus is nothing in comparison to what you can get from nomads or what you can get from other events. So that's another downgrade. And then you just have this little throwaway commander pack that you can buy. It's cute because it's a Christmas little gingerbread stack, but it doesn't help you whatsoever in the long play of the game. Then you also have this base food production, which I didn't even realize was in this. This one's not too shabby. 
level 14, let's just remind ourselves really quickly that you can purchase better ones simply in here. Let's take a look. Yep, you can start off with a level 20, which is nearly double the amount of food production bonus that that one gives. So at the end of the day, there's nothing actually worth buying. Maybe if you're super desperate for a small amount of time to buy something like this, for example, you need food really badly, you need the increase, you don't have the gold tokens or whatever these things are called, gold pieces, you don't have the gold pieces to afford that. You just need to fill up your castles really quickly with food production bonuses, then maybe it makes sense. But I'm spending way too much time talking about the charm shop. Goddess of nature, complete waste. You only buy this so that you can use the fusion forge and that's a whole nother video in itself. Let's move on to the insignia shop. The insignia shop, uh, pretty much the same as the charm shop. You get the master summoner, which is another commander, another decent commander. The shadow sorcerer, which is the same exact thing that we just looked at. So we have the master summoner and then the apprentice summoner. Very cool. It'd be way cooler if they transferred these to relic equipments, but I'm not going to talk about that just yet. Scroll down more decorations, but they're not useful. More materials. They're also not useful. And another goddess of nature, not useful. So in general, this event is bad because you only get red equipments, you get no good decorations, and you have no incentive to try because the events are auto-fill and send attacks out. Hardcore mode doesn't even matter. The defenders are easy. I hope that's kind of a good list of all of the things that I think are wrong with this game. I'll probably put them up on the screen throughout the whole rant itself. So let's talk about how to fix this event. Well, first and foremost, let's talk about rewards. I don't think they're ever going to add something like this to the game, but imagine how cool it would be if they somehow updated these commander and castellans to have relic equipment. For example, the master, s or not the master summoner, the shadow sorcerer. What if this was a relic equipment, a relic commander? So in other words, I'd come to heroes and it would be the master summoner here, or it'd be the whoever their name was. It'd be them instead of all of these random ones that we've been seeing forever now. That would be something super interesting and unique that might make it a competitive playing field to like participate in. I don't think they're going to do that though. So let's talk more broad. Silver pieces, that's cool. I'm happy they have that, but this payout or this conversion system, I don't think that's fair. 500 silver pieces for 1000 of these charms, that's not a fair payout. First of all, that's not worth it. They should update this to make this more competitive and more fair. They should add a four effect relic equipment here. Maybe you can only buy it once per event. Even then that makes this event way more worth playing and grinding for. Then they should update the decorations. These decorations should at least be around 3000 public order. 3000 is even low. You can get 3500 public order from decorations in Nomad. So this should be at least 3,500, 3,000-ish. 3000 it should be competitive. It should be competitive with the other ones they already have in the game. Then they should update these, make these modern, make these more realistic as to what everything else currently is in the game. It's not that hard for this game to just update some of these decorations. They have this event in the game, but it's just gathering dust and it's not competitive at all. Furthermore, they should make the ranking system actually have more rewards. The, the ranking system should totally have better rewards, better incentives to grind, better incentives to be the top 10, top 20. It should be a lot like the monthly event or the ice championship where people want to grind or just like blood crows even. People want to actually participate in this event, grind it out and get a good reward for all of the time they invest. Next, I think you should be able to buy Beyond the Horizon rewards here or materials here, maybe some fabrics. All of those Beyond the Horizon rewards are super beneficial. This would be a great place to plug them so people can actually buy them. All we're looking for is a good variety of rewards so that obviously you're not going to be able to buy all of the rewards in one go, but it gives you something to think about of, hey, do I want to buy food production bonus? Do I want to buy more commanders? Do I want to buy relic equipment? You get the point. So just adding some more variety would be amazing. And honestly, just take the goddess of nature out. The fusion forge is a waste of time. Everyone knows that. So take that out entirely. Insignia shop, honestly the same, exact same thing goes. Add some more unique rewards here. They should add look items here, maybe unique permanent ones that have no effect. Maybe some that are a couple extra wave effects. Maybe some cool castle look items. You get the point. It's just 
I'd love to see some more unique art and unique stuff come out of this. And also, I just, I do think that these are pretty, pretty cool looking, and it would be cool if they updated them and made them useful. Perhaps they make one 4,000 public order, but it costs way more, way more, maybe like 60,000. You know, you have to save up for a long time to get it. I don't know. All I know is that they need to update this event and make this playable. Right, I'm going to check back in once these attacks land, but I just wanted to really rant a little bit and talk about how this event could be better because I think it's a great event in general. I love the events where there's no penalty and no punishment for failing an attack as there are with Blood Crow and everything else. So it's always cool to have events like this, but it would be nice to have better rewards and a better system in place for this event if they're going to keep it in the game. If you have any ideas of your own, I'd love to see them in the comments because the reality is that Good Game Empire might actually see this video and consider taking action. If enough people show interest in it, they might actually add it to the future things they're updating in the game. And if we can make any changes like that, that's all that matters to me personally. So I'd love to see what you think. Comment down below and I'll check back in shortly. My attacks have returned. Oh, daily shapeshifter report. So it does look like it is a daily reward type of thing. The attacks were easy. One of them lost, so I deleted it because I was embarrassed that I sent <laughs> one, uh, one, one loss attack. But you get the point. You get some shapeshifter charms. You get some points earned. Uh, what are these got again? Wait, no, it still doesn't tell me. Okay, I earned some of these points. I can see myself in the daily ranking. I attacked four successfully and I'm already top 10. That's how easy and barren this event is. Not that many people are actually participating in it. I don't even know how he has 90,000. Maybe he has some of these and just used them. I don't know what there is to gain out of it. I hope this sh uh, shines some light onto how to fix this event and how the event works overall. Going forward, I think the videos are going to kind of be an overview, so it's going to be an EDU alongside a fix. So I just want it to be an all-inclusive video. I apologize if this video was a little bit longer than you'd expect, but like I said, it is the first in the series, so expect the next ones to be a little bit shorter and a lot more straight to the point. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great rest of your day. Comment if you have any comments. Like subscribe you know all the all the standard youtube stuff it would mean a lot to me thank you so much bye